people's platform. Manu Joseph is an Indian novelist, journalist and screenwriter. He is a former editor of Open Magazine and a columnist for the International New York Times and the Hindustan Times. His debut novel Serious Men won the Hindu Literary Prize and the Pen Open Book Award. It has been adapted by Sudhir Mishra as a feature film. His second novel The Illicit Happiness of Other People was published in 2012. He also wrote the screenplay for the film Love Kichdi. Manu is also the creator and writer of Decoupled, an Indian English language comedy web series which was released on Netflix in December 2021. My next guest is award-winning writer and journalist Manu Joseph. Good evening and welcome to the show. Um, speak to us first about your transition from journalism to fiction. Um, do you believe that um, crafting fictional narratives was aided by your uh, factual journalism career? How does it work? I feel that uh, writing is writing at one level. You, sh you should just know whether you're writing fiction or fact, you know. Uh, when I was, I started writing professionally uh, uh, very young, I, I was 20 and at that point uh, there were only two professions which would pay you for writing. One was journalism and the other was advertising and for some reason you had to be posh to join advertising and uh, so journalism it was for me and uh, I always wanted to write uh, a, a, a novel because my inspiration was all from novels uh, though I did read uh, non-fiction um, so uh, it was inevitable that I would attempt novels and uh, eventually it just, it just worked out and journalism was an excellent training uh, for, for, for the sheer marathon which novel is. A lot of writers who attempt novels who are not lucky enough to be in a writing profession, uh, they struggle a lot with that isolation and uh, the stamina that is required and the experience that is required uh, to judge your own draft. Um, speak to us about your usage of satire in both your novels, Serious Men and The Illicit Happiness of Other People. And I'd like to juxtapose this with our fragile sensibilities of today. Yeah, you know, satire is some kind of an abuse word. Uh, satire is used uh, in reference to my works uh, very often. And sometimes when I'm in the mood, I don't say anything. And sometimes I try to grapple with what is the meaning of satire in this context. Uh, I uh, uh, definitely I don't uh, mock I try to derive a certain amusement from reality you know I just look at one layer of reality which is very amusing to me and it's a certain voice which I think uh, uh, particular kind of people have it's like falling you know you always fall the way you're meant to fall mm -hmm. so uh, when you find your voice it's like that you know Everything you do has an element of amusement in that, you know. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah. So that that is the story behind that. Uh, the the description of my work as satire. What is the second part of your question? Um, given the. Um the fragile times. Fragile so sensibilities sensitive. Yeah, of yeah, today. If, cancel culture. Yeah, you know, so uh, I'm beyond, I, I think I'm beyond cancellation when I've been cancelled. I mean, there, you can only be cancelled so many times. And uh, I feel that if you're a particular kind of a writer who wants to say what you want to say, it's a good filter, you know, to filter out people, right? Mm -hmm. You just write and then you, the, a particular kind of people don't come close to you. Uh, so it doesn't bother me much. And uh, the, the fragile people are just a bit vocal that's all otherwise most people uh, are with you and uh, if, if, if they understand what you're saying if, if they, it would make sense uh, they don't mind being a bit offended here and there you know so uh, and politically I feel that sometimes it is not a bad thing for a writer if the times are sensitive because then the stakes are so high for everything and uh, as long as you know how not to get killed, that is very important. You can uh, uh, you can uh, you can really find new way, new, newer and newer ways of writing, uh, and that, which could be quite challenging. You know, sometimes I feel that if 
if you're a Scandinavian, I sometimes wonder what do they write about? You know, they do search for that gloom, they, they search for that gloom and that weather and crime. Mm -hmm. It is not a coincidence that in, in very happy countries, I mean, sociologically happy countries, uh, not, not sociologically, economically, you know, advanced countries, a lot of writing needs to focus on crime and depression and gloom uh, to derive some kind of a gravitas and strength, right? Um, so maybe uh, if you're in a country where it's just difficult to write anything, uh, that challenge itself can be creatively very stimulating, you know? Uh, because if you, uh, if you adjust to the environment, if you compromise too much, uh, that's, your, that's your death. You know. Across South Asia, we see the rise of authoritarian leaders, misinformation, disinformation. Um, in your portrayal of characters through your work, how do you think that you can successfully uh, craft a story of hope? Or is that your role? Well, it may not be my role, but it's just a good idea. Uh, to give hope. I just feel that uh, when times are regr uh, regressive and also uh, oppressive, uh, it is uh, probably it's just one political side which is uh, so, right? Uh, so you can still manage to write about uh, love and various other things uh, and, and hope to just get away. So I feel uh, that if your question is how do you survive these times as a journalist, then uh, I think these are very hard times uh, and I feel that this, is, this, this state is going to uh, stay long because f freedom of speech is an invention and I believe that freedom of speech like the West is an invention. It is one of the most beautiful things, beautiful ideas human beings have come up with. It is not natural, it's not organic. What's organic and natural is to have emperors and uh, authoritarian regime who don't let you speak. And the West, in, uh, because of their own self-interest, I feel that good things happen not because there are good people. Uh, they might be good people, but uh, they may not be very useful. Good things happen when the second rung fights the top rung and they need to uh, uh, fight on the basis of virtues and they need to create things like freedom of expression so that they can say stuff against the top rung and uh, free, freedom of expression and free speech uh, is, uh, is an invention of, of uh, a Western evolution. Uh, I've, I feel that we, we can't take it for granted and we are losing it. We are losing it uh, every, uh, in most places. The West because the institutions are still strong and they know the meaning of institutions, which is that an institution uh, will not adjust to its environment. An institution uh, has its own internal me mechanism and they will stand up. Like you take America, when Americans are very critical of themselves, but the Supreme Court can stand up against uh, a former president who's going to be the future president, you know. Uh, it, I feel that in my country, uh, and I know that in your country also, uh, people don't do it because institutions are still too new for us. And uh, we are losing it, and once we forget it, people will not know that there was a time when there was free speech. But it's not as though people are innocent. Uh, people are so intolerant to anything uh, which they don't like, uh, so which the politicians have used. Uh, just because someone makes you uncomfortable or you don't like that person, uh, you want to deny that person the right to speak. And slowly that has become the environment today, you know, where you're actually not offended. In fact, the Indian, uh, India is a paradise for offended people. And the Indian offense is very strange where you look at those guys who are protesting, you know, they're not uh, feeling offended. They're not hurt. It's like some kind of a party, you know, to go on a protest. Uh, so, uh, but both the right and the left, the left keeps talking about free speech. I've not, I've not seen a more intolerant type of people uh, than people on the left. It's just that they're powerless politically, uh, and, uh, but they are as much, uh, uh, they are as thuggish in their own way as the right, you know. So, uh, so it is, 
time that everybody stops being sanctimonious and think that the only the other party is doing it and begin to understand the meaning of free speech, uh, which is that you first have to take what you don't like. You know, you have to take uh, not just a joke, an opinion or whatever, you know, that uh, you don't like. Um, Manu, um, you said freedom of speech was an invention by the West. Yes. Um, just elaborate on it. It was never there. You look at it intuitively or you can read history or you just think of what you know about human nature. When was, when, when did we have a society where you have a, say you have a king or you have powerful people, could a poet or a writer just say anything? and get away with it and everybody who has power is supposed to accept oh that's okay you made fun of me the court jester you know is even in our comics the court jester is almost almost getting killed because he made fun of the king right and then he's saved freedom of speech is not a word is the origin of freedom of speech uh, intellectuals may, might make it look like it came from some great, great ideals of humanities it is not freedom of speech came from a more powerful place which is practicality you know when you want to create a system okay where you don't want one section to be p too powerful you need to support freedom of speech, which is what the aristocracy of Europe understood and uh, they, they promoted. And once something becomes a habit, it becomes very difficult to withdraw it. And of course, freedom of speech also grew at the time when it was a golden age of the elites and uh, they had a lot of sway with people. But we are losing all this and once you lose it, uh, it's very difficult to regain it because free, free speech is not uh, free speech is at once part of human nature at the same time organized free speech is not a natural part of human establishment manu your characters grapple with existential issues societal expectations as and as readers these are things that we as human beings also experience and go through um, Speak to us about how, um, how, how you chose to focus on these deeply human um, issues. So in a novel, uh, a novel begins because uh, the seed of a novel usually begins in a certain character that you want to uh, uh, talk about or a powerful emotion, you know. Very rarely that, uh, does a novel begin with a story, you know, uh, people do think that a, novels are, a novel is about stories, but no writer wakes up and says that I have a story to tell, actually, though it might seem that way, uh, uh, what motivates a writer is you have something to say, you know, and when that is the emotion, then automatically you talk about things from reality and things around you and that is how people relate to you. It is when that you have a story, you know, set in Mars, you know, about aliens and stuff like that. You know, that's a story, you know, there could be an, even there, the alien is actually very human. You know, an alien is lonely and the alien wants to escape its planet, you know, it's, and it's about liberation. You know, it's still a very, we can't escape. No matter what you do, you can't escape the human condition. You know, even when we do comics, all the animals are actually humans, you know. Uh, so that is the thing about writing. The moment you express yourself, uh, you are talking about how people are. That is why I find it funny that when there are whole academic streams which claim to be about humans, they always talk about humans which humans don't relate to you know they talk about these grand theories that human beings are about which actually don't make any sense but when a guy says i'm going to make up a story suddenly people see that they are ta he's talking about them right even our magic realism our religions everything makes sense to us because they are about us uh, only academic concepts about human beings are not about us. Manu Joseph, thank you very much. Thank for, you so much. Um, sharing your perspectives. Thank you so much.